Hey guys, welcome to this C++ game development series where we are creating a simple 2D snake game using C++ and SFML. In the last video, we created the main menu for our game and we were able to detect and highlight the selected option from this menu. As you can see, I have changed the highlight color from yellow to black. Also, last time I added a to do note inside the update method to load the gameplay state when play button is pressed. So in this video, we will focus on creating this gameplay state. So as usual, we will have to create a new class. This one will be named Gameplay. This class will also be derived from the state class. Similar to main menu class, this one will also hold a shared pointer to m underscore context. This context will come from the input parameter to Gameplay constructor. And just like the main menu state, we will need the pure virtual methods from state.hpp and additionally we will also need the pause and start methods because gameplay can be paused by user. Let's add blank implementations for these methods in the gameplay.cpp file. Now we can start creating the gameplay state. For our game, we will display background grass on which the snake can move, walls on the four sides of the window, and food which the snake can eat. To display all these things, we will use the SF sprite class. So let's start by adding sprite header in gameplay.hpp. It is located under graphics. So I'll add SF sprite members for m underscore grass and m underscore food. As there will be four walls, one on each side of the window, I'll use std array of four sprites for m underscore walls. For this, we'll require the array header. The sprite for snake will be added in the next video. So I'll just add a to do note here for that. The textures for the sprites are some PNG images that I have created and added under textures folder in assets. All these images are 16 by 16 pixels and I have also added them in the git repository. So similar to what we did for init method of main menu, we will have to load the assets in the init method of gameplay state too. But before that, let's add some new enum members in the asset id enum. I'll add grass, food, wall and snake here. And now in the init method, I'll load all the four textures using add texture method from m underscore assets. Remember that we added an optional parameter in the add textures method named want repeated. I'll set that parameter as true for grass and wall. This is required because the texture of grass and wall are just 16 by 16 pixels in size, but we want to fill a much bigger area using these textures. Want repeated will make sure that the texture is repeated as many times as needed to fill the entire area of the sprite. After loading all the textures, now let's start setting them on the sprites. First one will be m underscore grass. I'll use the set texture method on m underscore grass to do this. It needs the texture as parameter, which we will get from the asset manager using get texture method. Next, I'll use the set texture rect method on m underscore grass to set the rectangle of this sprite as big as the whole render window. For this, I'll have to get the rectangle of render window. We can get this by calling get viewport on m underscore window. Get viewport needs an object of sf view. Here I'll use the get default view method on m underscore window. To explain this in short, sf view is used when you want to display a specific part of the whole scene. If you have not set any view for the render window, the whole scene is displayed and get default view returns a view as big as the render window. As we have not used any explicit view, get viewport of default view will return the rectangle of whole render window. And now the grass sprite will cover all the screen area. Let's check this by drawing the m underscore grass on render window inside the draw method. We will also have to call clear and display on m underscore window here. Before we build this code, we will have to push the gameplay state on the state stack when play button is pressed. For this, let's go to the main menu.cpp file. First thing to do here is include the gameplay header. And now inside the update method, we can remove this to do note and add the gameplay state using add method on m underscore state. I'll set the second parameter as true because in this case, we want to replace the main menu state with the new gameplay state. And now we can build and run this code. If I select the play option here, the gameplay state gets loaded and as you can see the whole screen is filled with grass sprite. Right now we cannot close this window because we have not implemented the process input method for gameplay state. So let's kill this game. I'll quickly copy the code to handle window close event from main menu.cpp and paste it in the process input method of gameplay state. Again here we need the event.hpp. 
so let's add that now similar to m underscore grass let's set the texture for m underscore walls for this i'll use a for loop as m underscore walls is an array of sprites i'll write auto ampersand so that we can get a reference to each sprite inside this loop i'll call set texture on each sprite and set the wall texture let's also make the same changes in the draw method to draw all these walls again here i'll use a for loop to draw each wall on the render window now again going back to the init method we will have to set the correct texture rect for walls similar to what we did for m underscore grass so i'll take the first element of wall and call set texture rect on it this method needs an int rect as input so let's check what an int rect is if i see its definition it's just a type def for rect class with int as template argument and if i check what rect is you can see that it just represents a rectangle and one of its parameterized constructor takes four arguments the first two are left and top of the rectangle and if you look carefully the description says that the third and fourth argument here are the width and height of the rectangle and not the right bottom so keep this in mind that when we use rect we have to specify the top left corner and width and height now let's go back to our code so here i'll set the left and top as origin and for width i'll use 640 640 because this is the width of our window and for height i'll use 16 because i want the thickness of walls as 16 some calculations in the future video will be dependent on this value now let's try to run this code to see if wall is getting displayed correctly and as you can see a horizontal wall is displayed at the top of our window since this is working let's get the width of window from m underscore window instead of hard coding it as 640 i'll copy the same line once more for second wall this wall be the bottom horizontal wall for third and fourth wall i'll set the width as 16 and height as window height if we run this code now we'll be able to see the vertical wall is created on the left side right now all the four walls are getting displayed but since they are overlapping you are only able to see two of them let's place the wall at index 1 and index 3 at their correct locations for this i'll use the set position method for wall at index 1 the x position will be 0 and the y will be height of window minus 16 minus 16 is needed because set position will set the top left corner of this wall at given location if we don't subtract 16 the wall will go outside the window and we won't be able to see it similarly for wall at index 3 the x position will be window width minus 16 and y position will be 0 you might think instead of using set position why didn't we just set the texture rectangle such that the walls appear at bottom and right the reason for not doing this is because it will not work always keep in mind that when you set the texture rect it is not telling the sprite which area on the render window it has to cover instead it tells the sprite which area of the texture it should use for display to keep it simple set texture rect controls what is displayed and set position controls where it is displayed so now if we build and run this code you can see that all the four walls are placed correctly now that the grass and wall are done next we will display the food for this i'll set the texture for m underscore food from asset manager and then set its position as center of render window and to display it we will have to draw it on the render window inside the draw method that is it now we can build and run this code and as you can see the food is getting displayed right in the middle of the screen so that was it for this video in the next video we will create the snake class we will also write code to increase the snake length when it eats the food and we will also write some code to place the food at random positions whenever it is eaten by the snake so hope to see you in the next one